Hello, parents, and thank you for tuning in. I'm glad your students shared this with you. I wanted to throw together a quick video that, that introduces me and the class that your kids are in and explains a couple important things that could be otherwise a little confusing. This is some stuff that I would have traditionally done in our open house, but obviously with everything going on, um, we, we didn't get that chance to meet this semester. Uh, with conferences coming next week, I, I know it's going to be crazy busy and maybe hard to fit all of the classes in and, and myself. I have, I have nearly 200 students this semester. So I wanted to give you this opportunity to, to maybe answer some questions um, before, um, before you even, even had them. So, so first I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is William Doby. I'm a teacher here at UAIS. I've been in uh, Utica schools for, for 20 years now. I'm a graduate of Eastern Michigan University with brief stints at University of Michigan and Macomb Community College. Um, and your seniors will hear a little bit about that. Um, I'm sure as we, uh, we go through the year, I tell some of my, my college experiences and how hopefully your kids can do it a little bit more smoothly. Um, I uh, started my career at Jeanette Junior High. I had a brief stint at Stevenson High School before coming here to UAIS. Um, I was kind of on the ground floor of UAIS. I was one of the, the team members that was putting together, together curriculum uh, for, for this school before we even opened. And then in the second year of the school, I, I started to teach here and I've been here ever since and I absolutely love it. Uh, my family is very dear to me. My, my wife is a teacher at Jeanette Junior High. Um, my daughter is now a sophomore here at UAS. I'm super excited to have her in my AP World class. And then uh, my son is a seventh grader at Shelby Junior High in the Virtual Academy this year. This course um, is a course that continues on learning and in preparation for the IB exams that the kids started last year. This year we are focusing on 20th century conflict, 20th century wars with in-depth studies of World War I, World War II, and then in the second semester Vietnam and the Persian Gulf War. Uh, we are also going to study what, is, what the IB calls a prescribed subject. Uh, in, in our case, we're going to do the move to global war. This is uh, the interwar years between World War I and World War II and how, how we got into uh, to these major conflicts. Uh, we're also focusing on, on the history of the Americas topic. This is going to be for the students' paper three essay that they'll write at the end of the year. And that will focus as well on the Second World War, but more from just an American perspective and what was happening inside the United States uh, in particular during the Second World War. All of these put together will make sure your kids are absolutely prepared to succeed on all three papers of the IB exam in uh, the spring. If they are an HL student, if they are an SL student, they will only focus on those first two papers, which will be the move to global war and the 20th century wars. Um, your students completed an IA last year, so they've got their IA for history taken care of. That is not a worry. Um, the way I am teaching this course as we are in our virtual environment um, is, is pretty much all through Schoology, the Schoology platform. Your children can go check out every time we have class and a daily agenda, an update on what's happening step by step. You can look at that and see where our class is going, what we're talking about, what kind of homework there is. Um, and um, I, I make videos like this for my traditional lectures that I used to do in my class. Now I'm doing them from, from home or from my, my school studio here. And, um, and students can watch those. And then we serve, uh, we use class time to answer questions or to go a little bit deeper into some areas um, or to do some of that practice that is so important for the IB exam. Uh, the grading is the most confusing aspect to this class. I use a standards-based grading model. Um, if your child had me for AP World a couple years ago, it is exactly the same system as that. Uh, tests are heavily weighted in this course, 80% of the grade. Everything else is only 20% of the grade. But tests are, are not traditional in the sense that one test might actually be assessing four or five standards. For each one of those standards, the student is going to get an individual grade. So there's not one test grade for a test, there's maybe four. And those grades are either going to be a zero, a one, or a two. A zero means your child really is, is missing the boat on that standard. A one means you're decent, you're getting to where you need to be, but not quite where I want you to be. And then the two is where I think you've got the knowledge um, in order to, to get full credit and be prepared for that IB exam. 
for all of those standards, we put them all together and I crunch some numbers and I get an average standard grade that I then translate to a course grade or a test grade out of 100 points. Um, and so you'll see that reflected on PowerSchool. You'll see all their individual scores on tests once we um, are, are taking some. And then you'll see one translated grade. It's gonna be called SBG adjuster. It turns standards grades, zeros, ones, and twos into a hundred point grade. And you can see the scale next to me. Essentially for every five standards a student has, they're allowed to get one one and still have that solid A. Um, Students can reassess on anything um, and they can do that at any time within the semester. But I do encourage them to take care of, of reassessments sooner rather than later. Um, it can sometimes be an issue if students push things off to the last minute, uh, we might simply run out of time. So encourage them to not do that because I do need to have my grades set in stone by semester. It is super important, especially for our seniors who need those grades uh, to be set in stone, to be submitted to, to colleges. Um, late work is accepted, although I want late work to be turned in by the end of each quarter at latest, but of course, sooner the better. And, and late work is always frowned upon. I want your kids to, to be on top of things because when they haven't done their homework, when they haven't taken care of what they need to do, it can really uh, take away from their experience when we're actually meeting with each other. Please have your students be sure to notify me within Schoology if they are going to have any late assignments that they are submitting so they don't get lost in a, in a pile of emails, which uh, seem bigger than, than any pile of emails I've ever had before in my career. So all messages from students should come to me via Schoology. Um, last but not least, you can contact me um, at william.doby at uticak12.org. Uh, it's certainly the best way to get in touch with me and, and, and I'll be able to respond to you uh, as quickly as we can. I know we probably won't all be able to see each other at conferences, but I hope this answered uh, the questions that you would have for me. Uh, and if not, feel free to, uh, to shoot me a message at any time. Uh, thank you and uh, let's uh, have a terrific year, whether we're, we're online or in school. Take care.